one species of plant is only in flower for a few months, but it's out of flower, you need another species of plant to be in flower to support the insect pollinators and so on. So like links in a chain, we need functional ecosystems. Even if you could feel nothing for conservation in terms of emotion, those, those functional ecosystems are something we, we need. Beside that, of course, there's the emotional argument. I don't need to tell a room of people such as I see before me today the truth of things like a wonderful quote from Thoreau there, and wildness is the preservation of the world. I don't particularly want to live in a world uh, without pinky possums or grey whales or wolves running around in North America, even if I never see any of those things. The idea of living in a world where they're gone in the way the pink headed duck is gone does not appeal to me greatly. So I'm willing to acknowledge that, uh, that life itself is something to venerate and protect. We sort of see the strangular feet towering above us in the rainforest as somehow more magnificent than the piece of pond slime floating around uh, in the muck. But really, that difference of, of perception is really just our limited perceptions living down here on planet Earth. If we journey out into the universe, perhaps we will see things in a somewhat different way. We talked in the astronomy lecture about the moon landing, about that great triumph of human spirit and, uh, uh, and, uh, and exploration. Here's another photograph of the moon landing, one which is not the cliched image that everyone's ever seen. And I really think this photograph makes a powerful point. It's Buzz Aldrin walking around on the surface of the moon. And he described it as a landscape of magnificent desolation. Beautiful, but a landscape of desolation, of emptiness. And as an accident of the camera, I suppose, perhaps, but you really see in that little astronaut there the intense loneliness of where he finds himself, protected in that landscape, in that space suit, from an environment that would kill him instantly if the slightest patch of his skin was opposed to it. Without air, without water, without, without life at all. Uh, not a place where life is, is hard, but a place where life simply does not exist, has never existed. A barren emptiness of just nothing but rock, nothing but dust. And for most of the universe, as far as we know, that's all there is. Just dust, just rock, and vast, cold, empty space. And at that moment, that astral, I suppose, is the, the loneliest human being there is, cut off not only from other humans, but all other life. So we can imagine our lonely astronaut climbing back into his, his space capsule, climbing up the ladder, launching it, and, and moving away, leaving behind footprints on the dust that will be there in a million years because there is no wind, there is no water, there is no breath to ever obliterate them. And perhaps a sadder astronaut, he journeys back, turns his ship back in the direction where he came from, turns his ship back towards home. And as he makes that return journey, he looks through that tiny little window, eagerly searching for that first glimpse of home, peering through the window, peering through the window. What then? Can you see anything? Can you see anything? Yes. Wonderful things. Wonderful things. Thank you very much for your attention.